Hello, welcome to another um, Life of David Bible study. Thursday or, night Bible Thursday study, night. Life That's of David. Called. Yes. All good. <laughs> I'm still getting the name of it. But yeah, super happy to jump back into this. And this now that I'm in the mix, we have different rotations. So mm-hmm. now it's Pastor Jillian and me, Pastor Isai Ramirez, um, the newest member in the pastoral staff here at West Covina Hills. So you're, you're, you're getting the chatter from the associate pastors here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So now that the senior pastor is not not here, now we now we have full reign of this thing. I call him lead because it's gentler. Oh, lead. lead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already calling him senior, so... He doesn't care. <laughs> but this week we are in chap- 1 Samuel. Nope, sorry. 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel. I was in a whole different book. Hey, um, I made the same mistake with First and Second Kings with my middle school study today. Oh, nice. <laughs> I, I gave them Jonah three weeks early because I mixed up the two. <laughs> nice. So we're in Second Samuel. Yes, Second Samuel. Second Samuel chapter 10. Um, but before we dig into it, um, let's bow our heads for prayer. Lord God, thank you so much for another week together for this study. I pray that as we get into that, as we get into the meat and bones of this, that it will it will show us it will show us how your care extends, um, how to evaluate other people generously instead of with worst motivations. Mm-hmm. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. <clears throat> All right. So Second Samuel ten, um, and it reads: It happened that so it happened after this that the king of the people of Ammon died and Hanun his son reigned in his place then David said I will show kindness to Hanun the son of Nahash and his father showed kindness as his father showed kindness to me so David sent by the hand of the servants to comfort him concerning his father and David's servants came into the land of the people and the people of Ammon and the princes of the people of Ammon said to Hanun their lord Do you think that David really honors your father because he has sent comforters to you? Has David not rather sent his servants to you to search the city, to spy it out, and to overthrow it? Then Hanun took David's servants, shaved off half of their beards, cut off their garments in the middle at their buttocks, and sent them away. Okay, maybe we could stop there. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's there's two things that I see here, or like right off the bat. Mm-hmm. Um, last week we were in chapter nine, and this week we're in chapter ten. In the chapter nine, even the subtitle of this chapter said David kind David's kindness to Mephibosheth, mm-hmm. and so this chapter David has ki- uh, intentions towards kindness again. Mm-hmm. David shows kindness to probably hit like his number one en- the, the descendant of his number one enemy Saul, and he says I'm going to show kindness to him. And now David sees that king, um, the king of Ammon, the king of the people of Ammon died, and he wants to show kindness to his son. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is kindness. Chapter 9, we saw kindness received, and now we see, I guess, kindness... Um, misinterpreted. Misinterpreted is a good one. Yeah, thwarted, yeah. Uh, guarded, misinterpreted. Mm-hmm. Um, the... King David reaches out with kindness, mm-hmm. but the king, what's his name, King Hanun, his closest friends, his closest servants, his closest princes, the princes of the people of Ammon, they ask him, King David, are you, or sorry, King King Han- Han- Hanun, are you sure King David has the best intentions? Are you sure maybe he's not trying to spy? Maybe he has other motivations? So they're already putting like hesitation in his heart, like, hey, do you really think that that this is the best intention? And I think like right off the bat, like what what that tells me is like, what is their intention? What is their like motivation? Mm-hmm. Are they really looking out for the king? Mm-hmm. Um, it's a wise no. diplomatic move to mm-hmm. send these people to comfort mm-hmm. the new king and to and to Definitely. say and to develop a relationship with the new king. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is pretty standard diplomatic procedure mm-hmm. even nowadays, yeah, right? Absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah. Your your people were my allies. Your mm-hmm. father was a uh, he he he. I had a relationship with him, so I mm-hmm. want to show you. I have best intentions. I want to mm-hmm. be build a relationship with you. Um, and now he's. They're they're putting fear. They're putting um, 
hesitation. They're putting, mm -hmm. um, yeah, fear in his heart. Yeah, so they're doing a perfectly innocent, routine diplomatic mission, yeah. and it's being misinterpreted as spying out the mm -hmm. land. Yeah, and I think like, I think what that tells me, maybe to bring it home even just a little, is who who we surround ourselves with also really shows. Um, really affects how we see the world around us. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. There's there's good intentions that David did, mm -hmm. but it was quickly misinterpreted, and it was quickly overtaken by negativity, by mm -hmm. by hate, by yeah, misguided intentions, by mis mis misguided um, um, motivations. I like what you mm -hmm. said there about mm -hmm. how it got twisted by how who you hang out with matters. Yeah. Um, at Pastor's mm -hmm. Retreat a year or two ago, they, they taught us about something called triangulation. Mm -hmm. But you're smiling because mm -hmm. I'm sure you had some classes that yeah, dealt with absolutely. it. Um, because this guy is blessed with, with, with working on a social work degree that mm -hmm. the, the rest of us don't have. The rest of us had to pick it up as hacks from, you know, training seminars. Yeah, definitely. But triangulation mm -hmm. is the idea that relationships don't happen in twos. Mm -hmm but threes. Um, so let's say that I get, in a, I get in a fight with a friend and then I go to, I don't know, my husband to vent about it. Depending on what they did to me, he will either be, um, he will either calm me down and, mm -hmm. and talk, me, talk me off of my, 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 my frustration and harmony with that friend is restored or he'll go oh no they didn't how dare they and da, 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 and it will amplify yeah amplify mm -hmm. and so what 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 the king's advisors are doing here is mm -hmm. um making drama where there is no drama right. have you ever yeah. had this thing where you tell your friends about something that happened and to you it's like eh, whatever and all of a sudden they're like oh no they didn't defensive yeah they have their own feelings about it mm -hmm. they have their own view of it they weren't there but now they have their own view about it mm -hmm. and they have to react not only just with in the conversation but now mm -hmm. oh we have to take action we have to do something about that like i hate what they did i hate that and i think like yeah what this really tells me is like even just the negativity of others really does affect mm -hmm. our view of things um, it doesn't tell us really what King Hanun, what his initial reaction was, but King Hanun mm -hmm. could have had a good relationship with King David, but because mm -hmm. they they really like tarnished his view of mm -hmm. of David uh, with their own negativity, mm -hmm. he he responds with that as well. Um, but yeah, let's move forward because it's what this leads to. It's it's not only just a like what we're talking about it's not just a conversation that mm -hmm. escalates into more negativity but it also really affects a lot of people it does and and to to get yeah. why it spirals out yeah. what do you think about the specific yeah. stuff that oh, they yeah, do to david's men let's, just, let's talk about that because that, that is wild yeah. those details are there that is so shameful what they did so what did they do? They shaved off half their beards, cut off their garments in the middle at their buttocks. Um, yeah, their beard, especially in that time, was really a symbol of man manhood. Mm -hmm. So to cut off their beard, to cut off half of their beard, it's also like a symbol of dom uh, dominance, like mm -hmm. a, a symbol of like taking control, of dominating those people, of, mm -hmm. of s submitting them to their power. Mm -hmm. And then to cut off their garments, it's just it's just a shameful thing to, to see, to witness, to have that ex done to you. Uh, that would be rude from, even nowadays, right? Uh, definitely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> definitely. It had that layer of like the symbolism back then. But imagine like someone's beard is half shaved off and their clothes mm -hmm. is ripped half off, like... That's just shameful, yeah. and all these people, all these all these servants that had that came with really good intentions mm -hmm. of hey, we're here to help you, get sent in a really shameful way back home. Yeah, and I know I've harped on this many, many, many times over the years, but textiles were expensive. Yeah, that's even really bad textiles true. were expensive um, yeah. before all the industrialization that gives us fast fashion and cheap T-shirts these days. Yeah. Anytime you find anybody mm -hmm. cutting anybody else's clothes, that is like a serious yeah. problem because mm -hmm. 
clothing is expensive because it is made by hand Mm -hmm. on every level yeah so there's like so many layers right to the shame that that's and the disrespect disrespect yeah the disrespect towards like this is part of your own possession your own Mm -hmm. things your own like hard work the things Mm -hmm. that you own which is like what you mentioned it's not like they have like closets full of clothes but really this is like clothes that you know is expensive it's hard work Mm -hmm. for and even like their to have yeah their beards cut off like yeah it had just a different symbol of like of what it meant to be a warrior what it meant to be a Mm -hmm. man um their place in society there was even a levitical law about not shaving Mm -hmm. off the edges of the beards and so it's also forcing them to break the laws of moses Yeah, absolutely. You, so, you'll see sometimes modern Orthodox Jews still have the mm-hmm. side curls, or at the very mm-hmm. least, they'll have the side burns if yeah. they don't grow it all the way out. They mm-hmm. just don't think you should shave right up to the skin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So even that, it's already causing them to break their own ceremonial laws. And just so much shame, so much um, humiliation. And they didn't kill them. They didn't mm-hmm. injure them. This yeah. is all very specifically targeted mm-hmm. shaming. Yeah. Right. But let's read forward because mm-hmm. it gets worse. Um, <clears throat> I think I left open four. Verse five says, when they, told David, he, when they told David, he sent to meet them because the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, wait at Jericho until your beards have grown and then return. When the people of Ammon saw that they had made made themselves repulsive to David, the people of Ammon sent and hired the Syrians of Beth Rehob and the Syrians of Zobah, 20,000 foot soldiers, and from the king of Mecca, 1,000 men, and from Ishtab, 12,000. Now when David heard of it, he sent Joab and all the army of the mighty men Then the people of Ammon came and put themselves in the battle array at the entrance of the gates. And the Syrians of Zobah, Beth Rehob, Ishtab, Maka were by themselves in the field. And when Joab saw that the battle line was against him before and behind, he chose some of Israel's best, put them in the battle, and put them in the battle array against the Syrians. And the rest of the people he put under the command of Abishai, his brother, that he might set them in battle array against the people of Ammon and then verse 11 says then he said if the Syrians are too strong for me then you shall help me but if the people of Ammon are too strong for you then I will come and help you and verse 12 says be of good courage let us be strong for our people and for for the cities of our God and may the Lord do what is good in his sight so this escalated that very escalated quickly. very quickly, <laughs> right? Like King David saw that they were ashamed that they had like they were even ashamed to come forward to the king and he tells them, "Hey, stay in Jericho. Mm-hmm. Your beards your beards will grow." Yeah. But the the king of Ammon recognized, "Oh, like I've just made an enemy." Mm-hmm. So he's he sends people and he sends quite an army to like defend himself. And I think this is really what where it starts escalating more and more. He mm-hmm. sends people. They uh, Joab sees this. He sees the battle line, and he prepares mm-hmm. himself to to defend themselves. Yeah. Um, and as they're getting ready to defend themselves, I really, uh, I think what stands out to me is verse twelve: "Be of good courage. Let us be strong for our people mm-hmm. and the cities of our God. And may the Lord do what is good in His sight." This was supposed to be like a sign of like, hey, I'm here Mm -hmm. for you. I know you're grieving for your dad, Mm -hmm. but if you if you need a friend, I'm here. But they've it's escalated to, hey, we're we're going to defend ourselves against your people. And um, Joab um, and and the rest of the people, they get ready and they're they're ready to put themselves in, in wherever God leads. And I think like what's. What's powerful about this is that it's just that to say, be of good courage. Let's be strong wherever God mm-hmm. leads. Um, however God is moving in this, God God will do what is best. God will mm-hmm. do what is right. God will help us. God will mm-hmm. 
God will lead us. And I think that is just good. Um, that's just a good reminder for us of wherever, however we we don't see the finish line. We don't see where God is moving and mm-hmm. in, in in our in our steps, mm-hmm. but just recognizing God will provide and God knows what is best in this situation. Yeah. And um, just, you know, that's also key in remembering how this thing escalated. Mm-hmm. Notice yeah. that David didn't do anything retaliatory when his diplomatic yeah. envoys mm-hmm. came mm-hmm. back, sh- you know, sent messages about what happened. Mm-hmm. He protected their dignity, mm-hmm. but it was actually when... when um, The Ammonites discovered that David was angry about this, Mm -hmm. and he hadn't even done anything. Mm -hmm. He just told his men to sit still and wait for their beards to grow back. Mm -hmm. He wasn't actually marshalling any troops or anything. Right. But the um, but the the original aggressors were like, "Oh shoot, we got David mad. Let's get thousands of soldiers. Let's hire thousands of soldiers, just in case." And then David, David, who might have otherwise left them alone. Mm -hmm now has to mobilize no, has to, yeah. because that's practically opening hostilities. Mm-hmm. So, you it's know... Just, you put a lot of <laughs> military people in one place mm-hmm. and you put them and you surround people. Now you've left... Joab, you left the people no no choice but to... Hey, they have to defend themselves. They're surrounded mm-hmm. by these military men. What do we do? And this, yeah, like, this just escalated so quick because they realized, oh, he's mad. Let's send some, let's send our, let's send our troops. But really. Let's hire thousands of troops because we made this king mad, even though he hasn't done anything about his anger. Like, this all could have been handled differently. But instead, it's, if we send thousands of people, then something's going to happen. And something, Mm -hmm. there's going to be some... uh, yeah, the word you mentioned, hostility. There's, there's now it's, there's no choice but to defend ourselves. And this is the Bronze Age version of the Cold yeah. War, like mm. how how the Cold War mm-hmm. built up and eventually erupted mm-hmm. into a hot war. Um, yeah. Because the Cold War, for those of you who lived through it, you know very viscerally what I'm talking about. Love you, boomers. Um, is you know it started out as an ideology war, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Communism versus capitalism, democracy versus social, you know, democracy versus, you know, it goes on and on. If I, if I go too far down the rabbit hole of comparing and contrasting them, I'll hang myself on the terminology because there's some nuances there. Mm. It started as an ideological difference, sure. right? Yeah. And then it became about, well, we don't want their ideology to spread. And then they started putting troops all over the place. And then they started building bombs all over the place. And before you know it, I know I'm oversimplifying, you know, several decades of Cold (laughs) War here. But before you know it, our school children have to do nuclear bomb drills. Oh, man. Yep. Yeah. 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 And um, there's actual war wars going on um, back and forth in various places Mm. when it was really the sort of thing that ought to be dealt with around a debate table mm-hmm. rather than through firepower. And more and more firepower, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's such a good comparison. What what could have just been a conversation or even mm-hmm. just discussed just led to more and more military power, more military aggression. Mm-hmm. Um, well, let's close off this chapter. There's some other key things to take out of this um verse 13 so joab and the people who were with him drew near from the battle against these against the syrians and they fled before him when the people of ammon saw that the syrians were fleeing they also fled before abishai and entered the city so joab returned from the people of ammon and went to jerusalem when the syrians saw that they had been defeated by israel they gathered together then hadad is Hadadezer sent and brought out the Syrians who were beyond the river and came to Helam and Shobach. The commander of Hadadezer's army went before them. When it was told David, he gathered all Israel, crossed over the Jordan, and came to Helam. And the Syrians sent themselves set themselves in battle array against David and fought with him. Then the Syrians fled before Israel, and David killed. 700 charioteers 
and 40,000 horsemen of the Syrians and struck Shobach, the commander of their army, who died there. And when all the kings who were servants of to Hadadezer saw that they were defeated by Israel, they made peace with Israel and served them. So the Syrians were afraid to help the people of Ammon anymore. Um, I think like, oof, that's just, that's just so much strategy. That That's just mm-hmm. so much death. That's just so much um, casualties. Just because, mm-hmm. just because King David wanted to show kindness and say, hey, I know your father has died and I just want to show... I think like the mm-hmm. something that I wanted to point out as well the the contrast between nine and ten um, mm-hmm. again that um, <clears throat> Mephibosheth, who was really the last of the line of King Saul, mm-hmm. um, he had he he would have been the next one in in line and military. It, sorry, in to the throne in succession. In yeah. succession, that's yeah, that's the term. It, in succession, mm-hmm. um, King David just shows kindness to him mm-hmm. and. And even in the Hebrew, the word for kindness is this loyal love, hesed. Hesed, uh, yeah. Loyal kindness. And it's the same, again, in chapter t- chapter 10, hesed, that same loyal kindness that he just wants to show to, what's his name again? Hanun. Mm-hmm. And he just wants to show him loyal kindness. Mm-hmm. And I think that really what, what stands out to me, again, um, is really that who he surrounds himself with affects his ability to even receive mm-hmm. kindness to even receive that love mm-hmm. um, and it really leads t- to so much death where even king david himself has defended and killed it defended himself defended his people kills 700 charioteers forty thousand horsemen mm-hmm. um all because um it's led to all of this um hostility this enmity um and I think it also just just tells me that, um, yeah, just it's important to recognize that the love of God and the loyal kindness that we receive from each other, from mm-hmm. from from God Himself, and that even that we are able to give to others, that we should recognize how God is leading us to to give love and also to receive love, mm-hmm. and how we are called even to react and respond to when love is extended mm-hmm. to us and and i mean even going back to like we might not see it but the lord knows what is good in his sight yeah but, yeah you yeah, know bringing bringing this bringing this into regular church life you won't believe the number of times where i've seen i've seen different members of the body of christ even people within families mm-hmm. misinterpret what's meant as kind deeds Mm -hmm. as hostilities Mm -hmm. um and Mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of bad things happen when we misattribute poor negative you know poor Mm -hmm. motivations Mm -hmm. to what's meant with kindness Mm -hmm. um it's important to give our brothers and sisters the benefit of the doubt absolutely um sending a messenger when you're in mourning mm-hmm. is a kindness mm-hmm. it's a kindness mm-hmm. sometimes people don't always love intelligently okay mm-hmm. they don't always speak your love language and it's easy for you to misinterpret it um this happens a lot in marriages where mm-hmm. perhaps one one person is all about words and the other one's all about service mm-hmm. not that i'm speaking autobiographically or anything <laughs> <laughs> and the the service person will consider the words person to be kind of shallow because you know you tell me all this stuff but where's your where's where's the mm. where's the action to yeah, back actually. it up mm. whereas the words person will be going do you really love me i mean i, I know you do it. all of these things i know you do all these things but i need to hear it yeah. And um, it's so easy to to just attribute wrong motivations mm-hmm. to things that are just misunderstandings. Yeah. You know, so so our encouragement, yeah. you know, would be to give other people the benefit of the doubt, mm-hmm. listen deeply. If it sounds offensive, instead of going straight to the attack, probe a little more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Probe a little more. Mm-hmm. 
the smart diplomatic thing for um, King Hanun to do to these emissaries if he thought there was a risk that they could be spies, not entirely outside the realm of possibility, Mm -hmm. would be to just spy on them. Mm -hmm. You know, keep them well observed and see and and handle them. Handle them. Yeah. It's not Not rocket science. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Definitely. And create an international incident. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And all these other innocent people had to die because of just misinterpretation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think that's, yeah, that's our, that's our encouragement to, Mm -hmm. to, to our, our dear listeners, to our church family that um, to definitely um, follow the spirit, follow, follow the guidance of, of where God is leading us to also, mm-hmm. if we need to examine actions, to, to even take that up in prayer and ask God to help us to react to kindness well. Mm-hmm. Um, let's close off with prayer. Father in heaven, God, thank you so much for this study and for this reminder um, of the loving kindness that you have extended to us and that you have called us in, in in our walk with you to respond to every day. Lord, help us as we receive your love that we would be able to extend that to others and be able to extend it well and receive it well. Help us to be, um, um, to be open to receiving more and more of your love and in different ways and in, and that we would be able to to share it with others. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for who you are. In your holy name I pray. Amen. Amen.